Well, hello! Welcome back to my channel for part two of why Sookie Stackhouse is truly the worst. If you did not already see part one, it is linked above. Go check that out first. And this video will have the final thoughts. Moral gymnastics, here we go. With my boobs, the slut factor kicks in if I'm not careful. All right. I'd skipped a button, I was showing a little extra cleavage, I was momentarily embarrassed, but it wasn't a slutty button, just a, hey, I've got boobs button. Like she's always try like justifying it for herself, where if it was for another woman, she'd probably be like, oh my God, button up, jeez. But everything Sookie does is just the right amount. It's like Goldilocks and the three fucking bears, like, oh, that's too much sluttiness. Oh, that's too demure and whatever. Oh, I have just the right amount. Like, fucking shut up. Oh, this whole shit. I was profoundly glad Jason didn't come into Merlot's because I would have thrown a mug at him if he did. When Jason fucking knows his wife is cheating on him and she's a panther, and there's like this whole thing where if one of them cheats, someone, like if Jason were to cheat or do something like to break their vows, Sookie would be punished. And if his wife cheats, then her uncle gets punished. So he knows that she's cheating and he wants evidence, obviously. He doesn't want it to just be he said, she said. So he sets it up so that Sookie and the un the, his wife's uncle show up at the house when he knows she's there with her lover man. And so they catch her in the act. And Sookie is like, she doesn't want to talk to him for weeks because she's just so mad that he made her witness that. Bitch, it makes sense. Logically, like you would probably want to do the same thing. Like, shut up, you're so weird. And Bill made you watch somebody get jacked off in the first fucking book, and you were like, oh God, he made me watch something that was so private. But you didn't hate him for weeks and want to throw mugs at him. You just were like a little scandalized. But then when your brother does this, for a very good reason, you're just so fucking livid at him. Like, shut up, oh my God. I was still feeling the ebbing power of the huge wave of guilt that washed over me. I should have been upset that the fellowship guy was dead, I suppose, but I wasn't. Why do we, this happens so much where it's like, it's like fake guilt. It's like, oh, I should like feel guilty. So I'm gonna talk about how I, I, I like feel guilty. But like, no, you don't. This guy was evil. He was a terrible person, terrible guy. A lot of times people who intended her harm and she was just, it was self-defense. So she killed them and then she'd be like, oh God, I, like, I should feel bad. Let me make a big fucking show of talking about how I like, I kind of feel bad. Like, just shut up, <laughs> just shut up. Prejudiced, here we go. Like content warning for this column for just racial insensitivity. <laughs> and then also uh, like LGBT insensitivity. I didn't know a lot about law enforcement in Mexico but it did seem absolutely incredible to me that an American could get arrested in Mexico for hitting a prostitute if that was the only charge. So we believe that Mexicans just automatically don't care about prostitutes and that Americans can go there and beat prostitutes and why would they get arrested? He wore a suit that would have paid my cable bill for a year, and he was barbered and manicured and scented until he almost wasn't a guy anymore. All right. So, having a haircut and being clean and wearing perfume and having a nice suit means you're basically not a guy anymore. What in the fucking toxic masculinity is this shit? And like toxic femininity, like just toxic, just bad. This one, in and of itself, you could argue like, oh, Jashana, like you're nitpicking, but it's, it's with the larger context. I said this before. He was one of the blackest men I'd ever seen, and his face was tattooed with circles around the eyes. Despite his fearsome decorations, he looked calm and agreeable. So you could argue like she's specifically saying his decorations were fearsome looking. Like, yeah, someone having tattoos around their eyeballs is a little like, oh shit. Like you're probably a hardcore type of person. But in the grander context of all of these books, black people are almost always stereotyped as being scary, like super imposing physically. The women are always hard, straight-faced, 
rough around the edges, like not emotional at all, not soft at all. And the men are always in some, some way, shape or form, like scary looking, right? But it's always like, oh no, he's got tattoos, that's what's scary. Oh no, he's really muscly, that's what's scary. Yeah, except every time there's a black person, they're scary for some reason. Like right here. I watched him because he needed watching. He had shoulder length dark brown hair that flared around his head in a cloud of corkscrews. I found myself eyeing it enviously. And then she thinks about his hair for a few minutes. After I'd gotten over my hair envy, I noticed that his skin was the brown of mocha ice cream. Though he wasn't as tall as Alcide, he had thick shoulders on an aggressively muscled body. So again, another black man who is aggressively muscled and needs to be watched. And just, okay. Oh God, Eric and Sookie, I, I definitely mentioned this when I reviewed this book. Or no, I think I tweeted it. Maybe both, who fucking knows. They're talking about people eating, needing food or some shit. And, I, oh, I think he was talking about back in his day when people would starve and like food just wasn't readily available. And he says, the point is, the food is here to be had. And Sookie says, not in Africa. Oh my God, yeah, in the whole entire fucking continent of Africa, nobody eats. It's so hard to find food everywhere you go in Africa. It's just one big food desert. Like, are you actually fucking serious? <laughs> and this is another instance though of like, contradicting shit because there are other parts where Sookie references like being well read and she reads Time magazine and reads the news to keep up on affairs and foreign affairs and oh she she knows things she's not entirely uneducated and then she says some shit like this like you kind of are though I was definitely straight laced I preferred to think of it as having a more evolved sense of privacy Yep, you're fucking better than everybody. Mm -hmm. I couldn't really hold the prostitute part against her since there hadn't been that many ways for a woman alone to make a living in the old times, even a vampire woman. Why would you hold her being a prostitute against her anyway? I seldom got to see Quinn, who was kind of my boyfriend, if at my age, 26, I could use that term. Again, I know the author is older, and it, like it's things like this that just scream someone who's a bit older wrote a younger character and like doesn't really have a grasp. Like, I don't know anybody who thinks calling your boyfriend your boyfriend when you're 26 is weird or I'm like, what? Okay. Oh, this is stupid. Jason goes, shows up at her house and she's like, I got some errands to run. And he's like, oh yeah, I'll go with you. Like, let's get in your car. Of course he'd want to ride in my car and burn up my gas since we were running my errands. Yeah. Yeah, he would. <laughs> what? But like nothing about that sounds neutral and like, oh, of course he'd want to do that since we, it's, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I was just being nitpicky at this point, but that reads to me entirely like her being snarky. Like, of course he'd want to do this and, and use up my gas. Like the burn up my gas part is what pushes it over into you're being snarky as fuck. And why? Like, yeah, that makes sense. What the shit? I realize that it's silly to feel like you're on the shelf at 27, but I had missed some prime time and I was increasingly conscious of that fact. I hate it, I hate it. This isn't fucking true, ladies, gents, non-binary friends. You're not on the shelf at fucking 27. It's just this shit that society tells us and it's like, again, an older person writing this younger person and it's like just her traditionalist old school ways of thinking i guess i don't know oh yeah this okay so dermot the fairy he's like her their uncle their great uncle fairy but they like never age so whatever and he looks like jason or jason looks like him they're like dead ringers for each other and this type of shit is constant dermot's motivation was just as opaque it would be easy to assume Dermot's character was like Jason's because they looked so much alike. Why? Why would it, what? What? Why the fuck, have, have you never heard of twins? And that they're not the same person, literally? Like, what are you talking about?
talking. And she just constantly said shit like that about Dermot and Jason. Like, oh, I, I forget sometimes that they're not the same person. Why? <laughs> what? Oh yeah, those are being an absolute fucking dumbass. So she knows someone's out to try to murder her. Like, literally is like on the move, taking action to try to murder her. Then all I had left to wonder about was when Sandra Pelt would try to kill me again. Just as I began to suspect that being alone in the woods wasn't a good idea. Yeah, you think? Oh God, this. Oh God. I don't know why that means I can't ask you questions. I'm an American, I said standing tall. Oh God, I... <laughs> what? So because you're an American, like that just gives you the right to do anything all the time. Like you're the, oh, the stereotype. I hate it. Uh, oh yeah, God, this she's such a dumb fucking bitch. So it's two men, two male werewolves that, like, they are together all the time, okay? One is like this big burly motorcycle dude, and then the other one is like this nerdy, geeky, like skinny guy, and they're like always together, and they're riding on the motorcycle together all the time. Like, the skinny guy is always like on the back holding on. Okay, and he gets hurt, his name's Warren. And just then, Warren's eyes fluttered open. He saw Mustafa and smiled. I knew you'd find me, he said. I knew you'd come. It was touching, it was awkward, and I was totally confused. Okay, why the fuck are you confused? And if you're feeling awkward, it's probably because you're a little bit fucking homophobic. And so you're not confused. You know that they're lovers. You know that they like each other. So you're not confused because you're homophobic. <laughs> it was just, just dumb, dumb fucking idiot. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, so this is after she saves Sam in one of the last books. Uh, she saves Sam's life using her magical tool, the little Cluviel door, right? And Bill, is she hasn't been dating Bill for a long time. He's like barely fucking present. And he basically tells her like, you saved Sam because you love him. Like he almost point blank says it. Like it's pretty clear why you saved Sam. And she's like, I had planned to check my email, but instead I found myself trying to unravel Bill's meaning. Girl, you're so fucking stupid. Oh, okay, hypocritical. We can't bring him in, Eric said in my ear, or a war will start that will kill all of us. I think he meant all of him, because I was pretty sure I would be okay if great grandpa started a war to keep me that way, but there was no help for it now. I looked at Eric with something very close to hatred. So Eric is saying like, oh, I wanna save all of us. And even if he did mean, I wanna save myself, that's literally what you just said. You just basically said, well, I don't care as long as I'm safe. And that's what Eric is saying, according to you, what your assumption is. So make it make fucking sense <laughs> why you're looking at him with hatred and he's doing the same fucking thing that you are. So Eric and her are talking, and this is after like a ball, and she's like dancing on the dance floor. And then later, you were twitching your assets in front of every male in the room, he said, like a... You hold up, buddy. You stop right there. I held up a finger warning him. So what? He was going to call you a whore or a slut, which wouldn't be cool. But also, you call women sluts all the fucking time. Oh my god, the fucking hypocrisy. I can't. Oh, the, the, referring to Bill raping her. He did something you didn't want him to do, Alcide said simply. He wasn't himself, I said, but he did it. Yes, he did, and I was awful scared, but he came to his senses and he stopped, and I was okay, and he was really, really sorry. <laughs> Great message. <laughs> Great fucking message to send. Uh, like, he almost killed her. <laughs> oh yeah, so Sam doesn't like the vampires, right? He's like super annoyed all the time that she's so involved with vampires. And she randomly drops the bomb on him that the whole vampire marriage to Eric, as she walks out the door, she's just like, oh yeah, Eric and I got vampire married. And 
Sam is like, well, what the fuck? That was stupid. Like, he basically just tells her, like, that was really stupid, Sookie. This was not exactly the reaction I had anticipated from a man I'd been worried about. A man on whose behalf I'd been working my butt off for days. You just, like, threw it at him. What did you, ex how did you expect him to react? You would have done this, and that's what it, she's such a fucking hypocrite. If someone just threw some shit at her like that, she would totally be like, I can't believe you. I'm looking at you with hatred. <laughs> Fairies will do what they think will make the child happy or will benefit the child rather than what a Christian adult would do. It made me feel small and provincial to admit all this, but those were my true feelings. I felt like adding a series of disclaimers. Not that I think I'm such a great Christian. Far from it. Not that non-Christians are bad people. Ma'am, stop. <laughs> oh yeah, remember I said she's like always so proud of herself for being like a good hostess and her manners and her Southern hospitality. Dermot and Claude have been staying at her house for a while, like months at this point, I think. I felt humiliated that I hadn't ever thought of asking if Dermot minded sharing a room with Claude. Obviously he did. Sleeping on a cot in the little sitting room? I'd been a bad hostess. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, this is her being hypocritical or having a double standard with men versus women being scantily clad. I hardly recognized the server named Colton because he was wearing long khaki cargo shorts, flip-flops, and a green t-shirt with a pattern I couldn't discern. Okay. I kind of missed the loincloth because the last time she saw him he was working and had a loincloth on. So it's totally cool for men to barely cover their penis. <laughs> but if a woman is wearing shorts and a halter top, she's a slut. <laughs> okay. Oh God, yeah. So she's mad at Amelia and Claude, I think, or Dermot, or I don't know. Um, but people who are living in her house, this whole dumb plot where Amelia thought that Alcide was a good pick for Sookie. So Alcide stopped by the house and Emilio and Claude were like, oh, come get naked and, and wait for Sookie in her bed. She'll really dig it. So she comes home and Alcide is like naked in her bed, like, hey, baby. And then she's like, holy shit, dude, what are you doing? And then he's like, oh God, I'm embarrassed. The cringiest, dumbest plot line ever, right? But so she's mad at Amelia and Claude for doing this and setting this up. But she goes, it was hard to keep up this level of indignation, especially since I wasn't used to it. Um, hello, Jason, your brother who didn't do anything bad to you that you were so pissed at you wanted to throw shit at him for weeks. And you basically, you basically said you hated him for a while. You, you weren't able to keep up your level of indignation. Oh, fucking K. <laughs> Oh yeah, she's always mad at somebody for not telling her something, okay? Especially her vampire boyfriends. She's like, you're not filling me in on the vampire government or the vampire rules or this and that. So her and Eric, I hated what fucking happened with their relationship. It just like devolved into like kind of ghosting each other and it was so fucking annoying and like we can't communicate. God forbid we talk, like nope, never gonna happen. And so she's all mad and she's like talking to him on the phone. Of course, I should have told him about Mustafa's visit, but I lost my remaining patience. Uh-huh, right, I hung up. All right, again, you're such a fucking hypocrite. Cringy, what the fuck moments. I was surprised to find out there was a direct line from my palm to my, my hoochie. Oh God, <laughs> your hoochie? Oh, yeah, uh, so this is when she's finding out about her fairy ancestry, okay? And finding out basically that her grandfather was not her biological grandfather. That she was from, or that her parent, her dad and her aunt were both children of their grandmother and this fairy guy, okay? And she's taught, she's like learning this and is like, wait, what? Like, you know, she's confused. Like, what, my grandma, what? How did she have some, a, a child with someone that wasn't my grandfather? He raped her, I said, almost hoping it was so. My grandmother was the most true blood woman I'd ever met. So you would rather have your grandmother been raped 
than just admit that people aren't perfect and that people are complex and that she might have cheated for various reasons, whether they're justified or not. Like, none of that is relevant. You would rather she got raped. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I don't remember who this was in reference to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I kind of want to see who... I don't remember who she was talking to, and I can't fucking find it. I think she was talking to a, a wear panther or something. Was she talking to Crystal? I, I couldn't find it. But a uh, content warning for, like, pregnancy, losing a child, uh, miscarriage, like, insensitivity toward this, okay? Pretty severe. Like, this, if, if all this other stuff doesn't make you hate Sookie, I think this would. Uh, she, it says, I was so shocked, so angry, and so distraught that as they stopped what they were doing and stared up at me, I said the worst thing I could think of. No wonder you lose all your babies. I'm sorry. <laughs> what in the fuck? What in the fuck? Oh my good God. Uh, some more cringy stuff. Uh, I have big lust, I said. Big, big lust. You have big lust, huh? That's a thing? That, that, that's sexy? That we're saying now? No, no, no it isn't. Uh, then in a different book, I have big lust for you. Mrs. Harris, this is not a thing. <laughs> oh, uh, Eric's Dick is real hard in this scene. And she says, that looks painful. Would you like me to nurse it? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> like, this, this is a porno. <laughs> I'm gonna start crying because I'm laughing. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, uh, her and Eric had like banging sex, like rough, like, real hard sex and she had an ice pack for her vagina and it says the ice pack had done all the good it was going to and I removed it from my Yahoo place and put it on the table <laughs> oh my god guys ladies folks with vaginas let's uh let's start calling it our Yahoo place <laughs> Oh, uh, this was just from book 12, so if you saw that wrap-up, you saw this. Racial insensitivity for, uh, toward Native Americans, where she says, The past 24 hours had been my own personal trail of tears. I still just, I still can't believe that that's a thing we put in a book. Oh, uh, <laughs> she's going to have sex with Sam. And then I couldn't say another word, though I was thinking plenty of them, one-syllable words like good, please, again, dick, long, hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Final column is the special slash precious Sookie, which does sometimes cross over into the other ones a little bit, but um... And she largely only thinks of her body in a positive light from like a male gaze. Like if a dude tells her she's hot or is looking at her lustfully, then she's like, oh yeah, I have nice boobs, don't I? But then if she's looking at another woman who's beautiful, she's immediately like, oh, I'm so dumpy and fat. I'm not as pretty as her. Which I know is a thing, like people have insecurities, but she's just so hypocritical with it and has such a double standard with it that I can't stand it. Uh, I seemed to be more of interest I attributed that to the, to the waiter's youth and my boobs. Oh yeah, here she can't fathom that someone is like talking to her directly. Sam said, Suki, you have to suck it up. I was so surprised that I stared at Sam. It wasn't too often that Sam treated me like an employee rather than a trusted associate. It hurt, the more so when I realized that he was right. It's <laughs> like, okay, so you know he's right. But you're hurt just because he's talking to you like point blank and he's not like coddling you like a trusted associate. And like, why is that not 
like a trusted associate. I don't know, he's just being your friend and he's just telling it to you like it is. I had a moment's ridiculous pang because Niall hadn't rushed to my side or called to ask if I was okay. I'd only met him once and now I was sad he wasn't acting like my nursemaid. Yeah, that's dumb. Like, this is her, her fairy grandfather. You met him one time and now you're like, where is he? Why is he not saving me? <laughs> Shut up. It's like the whole world revolves around her. Everyone's life should revolve around her. Here's the, the moment. Quinn and Everett had stopped their task to stare. When I looked back at them, the two men hastily bent back to their tasks. Okay. I didn't get that I'd done anything interesting, but apparently I had. After another glance in the mirror, it occurred to me that maybe anything I did in the outfit was fairly interesting. If you were a fully functional guy. So a couple things with that. First of all, if you're not sexually attracted to Sookie or to women in skimpy clothes, then you're not a fully functional guy. You could be gay, you could be asexual, like you could just not be interested in you, you could just not be their type. So not fully functioning guys if, if they're not staring at you. Okay, cool, great. Um, but yeah, also again, like the flip-flopping of like, I know, like I have big bosoms and people want to look at them. And then being like, flouncing around with your little fucking ponytail and your little short, short leggings or whatever she had on. And then being like, what? <laughs> I don't know why they're looking at me. Like, you're so fucking annoying. You're me when I was like 16. So fucking annoying. Oh yeah, this kind of is wrapped up in the moral gymnastics. They just had like a fucking full-on battle with vampires, lots of people died. They knew going into it that it was gonna be a battle, like this wasn't a surprise. So they prepared for it. And afterwards, she's just so distraught and so like, oh my God, that just, that just happened. And this is in book 11. So this bitch has been through every book. There's murder, death, she's almost died. She's been tortured. She's seen other people tortured, whatever. So she's being all whiny and Bill goes, did you think Victor would die without bleeding? Did you think Victor's people wouldn't do their best to prevent his death? Did you think that no one would die? And she's just like, I just, it's still shocking. <laughs> what? It's just, it, it doesn't fit who she is sometimes either. Cause sometimes she's this like badass, ready to go, I'm on it. And then, then the shit will go down and it's almost like the author is trying to be like, no, she's moral though. She still cares. She still gets like the blood. Oh, it's so scary. She's seen so much blood at this point. Like the bitch would totally be desensitized to it. You know what I mean? Especially like knowing going in that you're gonna see some people die, some vampires die. And knowing that you need to do this. The dude's gotta die. He's terrible. He's the worst. He's bad for everybody. He's abusive, like all the things. But then she has to do this moral gymnastics, like, oh, but I just, I care so much. No, you don't, shut up. So there we have it. All of my collected quotes for evidence of why I believe Suki Stackhouse is just the fucking worst. Just the absolute worst. I know some people also severely hate TV show Suki. I actually quite prefer the TV show Suki now. Is she annoying sometimes still? Yeah. But far less annoying. And I feel like it's because we don't follow her so much. Because in the TV show they added so many different like side plots for other characters, for side characters that we follow. We get to know the other characters a lot more. And in the books, it's like you're just getting to know Suki the whole time. It's all from Suki's perspective. And I personally think, well, it's been like a year since I watched, I rewatched the TV show. I'm sure there's probably problematic shit in the TV show too, but I would definitely argue that there's way more problematic shit in the books than in the TV show. <laughs> so yeah, I will probably keep the first couple books just because I can't trade them in anywhere. They don't have back covers anyway. And I think I would probably give them a 3 to 3.5, just mostly for nostalgia, I, probably a 3. I'll, I'll say I'm giving those a 3. 
uh, instead of a four, because <laughs> they don't deserve a four. I hope that this was fun and enjoyable, even though I think it's gonna be a longer video. Um, yeah, I just kind of fucking hate this bitch, but you know, she does have a place in my heart. And I will, I will never reread these books ever again, <laughs> but I'll rewatch True Blood, I'm sure. Though I do really hate the ending of both the books and the TV show. Whether you're familiar with Sookie or not, I mean, if you're totally not, you might, maybe no one is watching this who's not familiar with Sookie at all. But whether you are or not, if you're watching this video, I hope that this was entertaining at least, watching me just, ugh deep sigh and bitch and moan and cringe and laugh at this dumb, dumb bitch. Um, later, Jashana popping in because my phone slash camera died while I was filming this video. Luckily, it died after an hour and a half and I was basically done. So I'm just popping back in to do the outro. I was in the middle of saying when I got cut off that this is a series that, yeah, I just, I don't recommend at this point. And like I said at the beginning, I don't know Charlene Harris personally. I have not read much of her other works. I've only read one of her more recent works. And I would have to go back and reread it to tell you with total certainty, but I don't remember there being a bunch of problematic stuff in that book. Um, certainly not to the level of this series. And they were written, you know, in the earlier 2000s and all of that. Um, but there's just things that I can't really forgive, I suppose. Um, so yeah, and I'm not meaning this rant to be any kind of attack on the author herself, though. I don't know this woman. She might be a lovely person and maybe she's grown a lot and learned more about her unconscious bias that was rearing its ugly head in many of these books. If you're at all interested in the Sookie Stackhouse series, you maybe you've been wanting to read it, maybe you started reading it, I just would recommend stopping after a book like four or five. After that, the plots are just gonna get so convoluted <laughs> and the characters just devolve into un unrecognizable characters, essentially. I had a lot of fun doing this reread though. People kept commenting and like on Twitter saying, why are you torturing yourself? And I really wasn't. Um, it was kind of, it became fun to, to find all the things that made me like roll my eyes at Suki. And they're very quick reads as well. They are page turners, so I'll give them that. <laughs> so it wasn't like some miserable experience to read through these books. It was actually kind of fun. If you watched this entire video, uh, you're a champ and you deserve a cookie. Uh, so put an emoji down below of a cookie. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for your time. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.